David, good morning. Good morning. Why has this love affair between Australia and the monarchy proved so enduring over the centuries? Well, you know, after researching and writing the book, it's still a bit of a puzzle to me. Uh, but it's, it's there. Uh, the, the royals can go through periods of unpopularity. Um, Charles and Camilla, for example, are the least popular of the royals, and yet it keeps bouncing back, and it's done that for over 200 years. Uh, it's still a pinnacle of social acceptance to be invited to a royal event. Uh, whenever we've got some major opening or event in Australia, we always invo invite a royal. It, it works. Uh, the royals remain uh, extremely popular to most Australians Is and I think the biggest hurdle to Australia becoming a republic. We'll get to that uh, later. I know that you are a Republican uh, and we might get that debate picking up in the next few years, but is it the sense of certainty uh, in, in a time of rapid change that the royals are still proving so popular? No, um, I've got no idea why. I mean, last year when Kate, William and baby George came here, mm. uh, the support, f uh, the public opinion support for a republic in Australia dropped to its lowest level in 35 years and uh, one media outlet here described uh, baby George as the republic slayer. Uh, the truth is I think most Australians feel very comfortable about a republic uh, but don't feel comfortable about ditching the royal family that they feel very attached to. I thought I knew a fair bit about the royals but I did learn some new things reading your fantastic book David including the fact that the first royal to visit Australia, a chap by the name of Prince Alfred back in 1868 was actually shot. What happened there? Uh, it was a very boozy picnic at Clontarf Beach in Sydney and he had gone to help a fundraiser for retired sail sailors and uh, a deranged uh, Repub Republican Irishman, uh, uh, O'Farrell, shot him and in the back. And uh, he survived, of course, and there was that, such outpourings of indignation about this. They had a big fundraiser which which paid for Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney uh, to be built. And uh, Henry Parks, the then Attorney General in New South Wales, introduced the most repressive anti-sedition laws. It became a jailable offence for two years to refuse to toast Queen Victoria. <laughs> really? Well, e even though, as you reveal, Queen Victoria had no great love for us here in Australia. Funnily enough, uh, I mean, she was a towering influence in Australia throughout the whole of the mm. 19th century. Her Golden Jubilee in 1887 and then the, silver, the Diamond Jubilee the following year uh, were the biggest celebrations Australia ever saw. The outpourings of grief at her funeral in 1901 were unprecedented and yet she showed absolutely <laughs> no interest in Australia uh, through her long reign and, of course, never visited the place and yet she was almost deity at the end. You also uh, reveal, it has been on the public record, but you go into some t tremendous detail about Australia's role in the abdication of Edward VIII. Uh, lots of pressure applied from both sides of politics on the palace for Edward VIII to step aside in 1936. Yeah, look, I think the abdication would have gone ahead without Australia, but the fact is Australia played a major role, uh, which is interesting because uh, the Prince of Wales, who became Edward VIII, who abdicated, had been in Australia in 1920 uh, to say thank you to Australia for the sacrifice uh, Australia made in the First World War. And at the time, and right up to the abdication in Australia, Edward was probably the most popular person Australia had ever seen. Uh, he was one of the world's first genuine superstars. Uh, but the Australian government and the Australian people just would not wear uh, Edward marrying Wallace Simpson and remaining king. You also write about, uh, fast forwarding to the 1970s, uh, Prince Charles attempts to become Australia's Governor General. How close did he get, David? I think he got very close. The Woman's Weekly boldly announced in a headline that Charles was about to be appointed the Governor General. It, um, Edward, uh, Charles, I feel a bit sorry for. He, he tried more than any other royal. But he never got the Australian acceptance that his grandmother, the Queen Mother, got. His mother, the Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Di, his children, William and Harry. Australians just never warmed uh, to Charles. Uh, I think he's always come across for Australians as too snooty and aloof and a bit condescending. Um, he tried for about 20 years to become Governor General. I think he would have made it in the earlier days, uh, but for John Kerr, sacking the Whitlam government yeah. and then suddenly 
the position is very hot politically. Uh, but Charles bore a resentment for many years about never being accepted as our Governor General. Going back to where we started, David Hill, uh, do, do you foresee any time soon Australia seriously becoming a republic, knowing how popular people like Harry, William and Kate are? Well, it's an interesting one. You're quite right about William. Uh, in in uh, opinion polls in Australia, he is the most popular royal, mm. even ahead of the Queen. And at the bottom of the list is Charles, and way below Charles is Camilla at the, the very bottom. Uh, uh, most Australians uh, want to see the crown when the Queen dies, uh, leapfrog Charles straight to William, and uh, certainly uh, support for a republic in Australia always goes up when popularity with the monarchy goes down. Uh, so I, I think we're going to see we have a very popular Queen in Australia at the moment. Mm. Uh, we look like having a, a less popular King in Charles uh, and a, a popular King in William. So maybe the window of opportunity uh, is when Charles is King uh, and after the Queen dies. Uh, but I think that's a pretty sad thing that uh, the fortunes of an Australian Republic uh, are, are largely dictated by the popularity or otherwise of the, the ruling monarch in England. I think many Australians agree. Uh, David, thank you. Hey, uh, by the way, your uh, old job is being advertised, uh, ABC Managing Director at the moment. Any interest in reapply? No, but I, uh, coming in here this morning, I, I uh, nicked uh, the Managing Director's newspaper, but I'll, I'll put it back <laughs> before I go. We won't tell anybody, including nice Mr Scott. Uh, David Hill, great chatting to you. Thank you. Thank you.